oh my gosh, I was out walking and I was talking to my mother on the telephone. And all of a sudden, one of the houses in the neighborhood, there was smoke coming out the sides of the building. And I was like, oh my goodness, I think that house is on fire. It was like the house had ears and smoke is just billowing out of the sides. And I walked around the block a couple of times. And by the time I finished my walk, the fire department had come. All the neighbors had come out of their homes. Everybody had evacuated the house and the entire house, the entire roof was in flames. And I sat there saying, oh my goodness, how did this happen? And we were trying to keep our distance because the fire department was getting in there and they were helping people and whatever. And we didn't want to be an extra set of feet going in the wrong direction. And we were clearly aware everyone had evacuated. So the house was good, but it was on fire. And within a matter of minutes, the entire house was just charred. Now I have no idea how the fire started, but all of their precious valuables suddenly became junk. And then they had to call a junk removal specialist and come in and wipe away all of the stuff and haul it off to a landfill. Okay. And I sat there saying, oh my goodness, what of my stuff would become junk if I didn't take care of it. And then it en ended up going to a landfill. And many of you have been following my specific journey over the last couple of months as I'm moving. And I didn't know that some of my stuff is actually junk. So today we're gonna have a really honest conversation about what is the stuff that we have, whether we've inherited it, whether we've been hanging onto it for five, six generations. It was my mom's, it was her mom's, it was her mom's, it was th their mom's. And then we just, we still have it. And we don't know how to get rid of it. We don't know what to do with it. And at what point do you call a junk removal specialist? I know it's a tough conversation. So today we're going to talk with Jennifer Hanslett and she owns a junk removal company in Denver, Colorado. And she just won an award for working with people because of her skills and her techniques and her cleaning abilities and her abilities to connect with the customers. Okay. She's got a very specific niche. So we're going to ask her all of our questions today about how junk removal works. And if your house doesn't burn down and it's just an organic collection of stuff, how do we turn the corner on that? And how do we get it out of our lives and remove it so we can start over again? So please help me welcome Jennifer Hanslin. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing so good. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to talk with you today. Well, I'm really excited to talk to you too, because you started yeah. out in finance and you learned how to, mm -hmm. you know, save and, and invest in all these things. And then all of a sudden you switched gears and you started a junk removal company. And if I understand correctly, you went out and bought a dump truck and you and your mother packed it. And then you, <laughs> you started hiring people and you yeah. grew your business. So I got to hear yeah. your progression of how you came in the junk removal business. And then we got to unpack what it means and how we get rid of our own stuff. Yeah, so good. So yeah, the story is a fun one. So way back in 2008, I was working at TIAA. It was a, a finance company. I had been there for 11 years, everything was fine. And then if you remember back then in 2008, um, everything was crashing. We were gonna go through a recession. The banks were failing and I got laid off. So, mm -hmm. It, to me, it was one of the happiest days of my life because I wasn't out to live in a cubicle. I loved helping people. I had clients. That was amazing. But yeah, I got laid off and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I decided I was going to take some time off. I had a severance and I was going to get an employment. And so I decided to take time off. And in the middle of that, I started, what did I do? I did Habitat for Humanity. Uh, I was doing a lot of little things. And then one day my mom called me and she was like, Hey, I think we can go see uh, they're going there. They were in the hospital and this was for all the TV shows. So she was like, we need to go make sure that they can come home from the hospital. And so I know that's a big thing for people. If they're in the hospital uh, and they're hiding something, there's going to be a good time that, that something needs to, to be seen. So we go to the house. Um, oh my gosh, we couldn't even get in the front door. So we went to open the house to their front door, could not get in. Our eyes were like, what is this? We kind of knew something was up because every time we would meet them, it would be at a dinner or outside of the house. So yeah, so then we got in and we started to work and we started to clean it out. And in the middle of that process, I mean, there's a lot to unpack even in that. It's how I learned to do what I do. Um, 
So it took probably three months. Um, we did some things right and we did some things all the way wrong, like all the way wrong. And so halfway through that process, I was like, hey, I'm going to start a business. And my mom was like, what? No, you're not. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to buy a dump truck. Like a what? And then we, took, we went, we bought a dump truck. And that was the start of what I named Clutter Trucker. Because I knew it was going to be a junk removal, but I knew it wasn't junk. So I was like, what's another name? Even in the name, I didn't want to call it junk because this was certainly not my grandma's junk, even though we could call it that. So Clutter Trucker started, it started out super slow as a junk removal company. And then along the way, wow, oh, wow, it was not about the junk. There was so much going on, so much, so much emotion, so many mental health, psychological like, how do we do this? Um, and then another evolution was then we decided after the stuff is removed, after their stuff is removed, we needed to help clean. And so that was just deep cleaning of a stove that hadn't been cleaned in years or a refrigerator or all of that. So that's kind of the evolution. And then it actually, it took another step. Uh, probably eight years in, I started speaking and training because it was not about the clutter. And so that was just... I recognize that there's so many people that needed help or wanted to understand more. And so then I knew it was like, hey, let's start to really get in. And and the more those TV shows came about and the more people started talking about it, um, the more awareness there is. And so it's really helping. It's helping. I won't say necessarily I agree with all the parts of the show sometimes, but talking about it is huge because people think they're alone and they're not. Well, you mentioned early on that um, you did all, all the things right and all the things wrong. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us yeah. some of the things that you did wrong as you are getting started that you maybe were unaware of oh. or that you didn't know you had to do? Because I know that there's a lot of um, tension when people have to release their stuff. And I know that yeah. as house cleaners, and I represent a whole world full of house cleaners, we go into side people's homes and sometimes there's this, I don't know, we don't want to shame them. We don't want to embarrass them. We know that there's an emotional connection, but we don't know how to navigate that. And so yeah. tell us some of the things that maybe you did wrong, something that you learned from. <laughs> yeah. So at the time, what we did wrong is we did a lot in the house when my grandmother wasn't present so mm -hmm. there were parts in that in that that we knew so we tried everything we tried to reason we tried to talk her into it these are all things that i didn't know it was made in love it was done in love but we were not understanding the extent of of the situation and so there were times that we would do things when she wasn't there we were probably a little bit too, we had our intentions a little bit too much. We probably could have slowed down a bit. So working with how I did back then and working with now, we take it super slow and we have to get 100% buy-in. And so if there's ever a point where they're like, nope, yep, then we're not doing it. So it was family. In the end, it ended beautifully and they were able to come home, but it was we probably had a little bit too many tears that were needed. If we would have just, we kind of freaked out. So now it's like, there's no need to freak out. Everything mm -hmm. is okay, going to be okay. It didn't happen all in overnight. We're not going to get rid of it all of overnight. I think the biggest thing in we did and how I can use that going forward is letting other people know their expectation should kind of not be in the equation. So this is all about that person and their journey and how can we support. Um, yeah, it's, there's a lot to unpack there too, but it's um, when we as other people start to get our expectation or like our desire in there um, because we think something's wrong, um, that just stalls it. And it's, it's not easy. That's not the easiest way to go about it. Well, I, I appreciate your honesty and your candidness about that. And I'm going to guess yeah. that your willingness to help your grandmother came from a place of love 
Um, yeah. It's probably a common thread. And I know lots of families that we work with run into the same yeah. thing where an elder person, uh, maybe a parent or a grandparent is getting to a place where mm -hmm. there, there are mobility issues. And so mm -hmm. for safety reasons, we want to remove some of the things from their home so that they can either move a walker or they can move a cane yeah. or a stand up thing or even a wheelchair, yeah. move easier through their homes. And we don't want any trip hazards and we don't want, you know, them tripping on boxes, Amazon boxes mm -hmm. or something, you know. And so yeah. out of a place of love, we want to help them out. So like you said, our our intentions, although they're very yeah. good, sometimes yeah. get get caught up in the, in this cycle. Tell me what it was that made you want to help your grandmother at that particular time. Yeah. I don't know. On some level, I, I was made for it. I really do. So there was everything involved in it. It was the emotional connection. And then it was like the, the joy of just getting down and dirty, which a lot of people, they, they don't like, but to see the before and after, like there was a lot in it that I was Wow, no one else wants to do this. Some people mm -hmm. think it's kind of gross or whatever, but I was like, oh, this is amazing. And how beautiful it is that we can go in there and not judge. Cause that's like the biggest key is the judgment. Um, the judgment of like, if you work for our company or if, like you're involved in it, it's gone. Like there is no judgment, but that's the number one thing that prevents, I think in, in the judgment and the embarrassment and the shame. Um, that prevents people and they already are like super nervous and they can't make the call. But if we can just open that up and just say, Hey, you are not alone. Uh, I can tell you that the, the, one of the number one things that people say when they call and we go into a house, it's like, I know, I know I'm going to be the worst that you've ever seen. And it's mm. like, it's already just this like mind thing where they build up and like, this is the worst. I am the worst. I am so bad. Nobody's going to be able to do this. And it's never, ever, ever, ever the case. So. And I'm glad you brought that up because I, I would like to say, and this is the cruel version of it, but I would like to say you're not mm -hmm. that special. Okay. Yours is not the worst we've ever <laughs> seen. You're not that special. Unfortunately, <laughs> we've good seen way. lots of stuff, but yeah, this is what we do for a living. And yeah. I, I want to I want to give a shout out to the house cleaners that we have or, that are on this call yeah. right now and those that are watching on the replay, because oftentimes mm -hmm. we do get called to a house. And like you said, when we arrive, there are mm -hmm. people that are I need the help. I know mm -hmm. I need the help. And so I'm reaching out. OK, this is like all mm -hmm. of the gumption that I have and all of the the courage that I have. Please, when you mm -hmm. come to my house, don't embarrass me and please don't make me feel ashamed to live here, because when you leave. And I'm speaking now on behalf of the of the customer. When you leave yeah. as a house cleaner, you get to go back to your own world. I have to stay here and live in this one. And so please yeah. treat treat this as my home because this is mm. my safe space, whatever I have collected or whatever's here. And so yeah. that and that may not even be conscious. It may not even be so I can just say from my experience that it takes a lot to ask for help. So if they're yeah. asking and they've already made it that step, that's a lot of in their body. That's a lot of shaking. That's a lot of like all of that mental chatter that this is like, so just know if you're about to walk, if you do walk into a house and you are kind of thrown off guard or you don't know what to expect, or you didn't know because they didn't say that's also a defense mechanism. There's a lot going on internally. So just breathe and be aware because the cues are there. So mm -hmm. we all have verbal cues. We have energetic cues. So it's like, they're going to pick up on it anyway. And it's okay to be shocked. It's okay. It's okay. Um, and then I would just say, be, yeah, just have so much acknowledgement and compassion. And to me, it's not like they are not aware that it's an issue. Um, mm -hmm. The awareness is usually there, but it's been how to deal with it. So acknowledgement is always good honesty is always good you don't have to play any kind of games everybody can feel honesty and they know what it's like so um yeah if you're ever caught off guard and not prepared it's like having a super compassionate honest and acknowledging like wow you you know what this is amazing you asked for help and if you're not the right person or you're not equipped for it or all those other reasons right um then you can have that discussion in such a tactful and loving way. 
Um, yeah, because it can be a lot if you're not prepared. And then you can talk about expectations or in a in a sweet way. Because I've I really have been and helped people um, where they call us after a cleaning company comes and they won't do it. And and that's super hard depending upon how it's how it's dealt. So sometimes they're shocked and they're shamed and they're like, I can't do it. This is too, you know, however it comes across. Um, it just opens it up for a little bit more emotion when they call us because they're, they're like, man, that was hard. So, yeah, I see both sides. Well, and on, on behalf of the house cleaners, if you're not mm -hmm. equipped for it, don't mm -hmm. take the job. Please don't. Please yeah. don't embarrass and shame the customer, but please just yeah. be honest and say, mm -hmm. I love that you fat the fact that you called me because I recognize mm -hmm. that you're in a process of, you know, working through the stuff that you have here at the house. And I love, I love that. And I support that. And there's somebody that mm -hmm. I would like to recommend that's probably better equipped. Yeah. And they've, they've, they're, they've got a different set of skills than yeah. what my, my company offers. So what I'd really like yeah. to do is I'd love to introduce you to my friend, Jennifer Hazlitt and, or the local yeah. company that's where you are, that then is equipped yeah. and has the skill set to come in mm -hmm. and then Take the time that maybe as house mm -hmm. cleaners, we don't have the same time frame where we're going to be able to work through the emotions and go through each of the individual items like maybe Jennifer's company does. Yeah. And even if it's not about going through items, let's just say it's also like sometimes it just has been um, completely neglected, maybe physically, maybe depression set in. Maybe there's all these other reasons why I just haven't been able to do it. It just builds and builds and builds. And then finally, it's like, okay, now I can ask for help, which by the way, after 2020, that increased dramatically. People were mm -hmm. stuck inside their homes. They were accumulating and it doesn't necessarily even have to be hoarding. It might look like hoarding, but it's depression. So there's, I don't like labels and I don't like to analyze what it is. I just connect with them and hear their story and how did it get this way? And are you ready to start? Um, so yeah, I kind of lost it there for a minute, but I, I would just say like, it might look like hoarding. It doesn't, even even if you're not sorting, um, it takes time. And sometimes in that initial meeting, the initial appointment is we really want to set the tone and set aside all of your expectations as a, as a house cleaner and connect with the person. Cause it's really not about the house. That's the biggest thing of this all, the junk removal, the, the decluttering, it's never about the stuff. So you, you kind of got to connect, hear their story, really take the time. And I know that there's so many beautiful house cleaners where it is about the house because it's just come in and they know how to do it. But when you get into a point where it's a little bit more than that, that's when you want to connect with like, hey, the person, how are you feeling? It's a little bit more hands on, a little bit more touching, you know, discussion, could be grief. There's a lot. We did a we did one with a woman and and it was like um, we got to the bottom of the pile and it was like I don't remember maybe 1980 was the was the newspaper and I we just asked like hey happened in 1980 and that was the yeah. year her husband died and that's when mm -hmm. it started so yeah. yeah there's just so we're so complex um, never about the stuff the stuff is just the no disguise. and the the reason. The reason for going through this stuff and processing this stuff is sometimes mm -hmm. one domino connects to another domino. And when you push yeah. a domino, there's a whole effect. One of yeah. the things that we've seen a lot that require the help of a junk removal specialist, for example, mm -hmm. is where life gets busy. And then let's say the washing mm -hmm. machine breaks. So we don't mm -hmm. get the washing machine fixed right away, but then the clothes start piling up. And then because the clothes yep. are piling up, then we say, well, we'll go to the laundromat. So we get some extra buckets or garbage bags or whatever. And we put the clothes in those because we're going to go to the laundromat while we're getting the washer fix or something. And then mm -hmm. there maybe there was a, a mm -hmm. pipe that broke or something. And we're going to get it mm -hmm. fixed up and we put towels down to stop it up or whatever. And there are attempts at fixing it. But before we know, mm -hmm. the floorboards have brought it out. We never got it fixed. Stuff has yeah. piled up. It's a domino effect that then mm -hmm. it triggers other things. Mm -hmm. And so we go yeah. into a home and what we're seeing is we're seeing the end result. We're not seeing the domino effect, but if you have a conversation, totally. many times people will say something like, well, I didn't do this because of this, because of this, because of this. And they can backtrack through the domino, the domino. Yeah. Period. Right. Yeah. So and they want to be heard. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and, and tell us what the, what the link is there. Whereas maybe family members, we have a family member who is, mm -hmm. let's say a quarter or they're in that domino cycle. At mm -hmm. what point do we jump in and say, Hey, I see that you're mm -hmm. in this, this cycle and I want to help without stepping. Yeah. Out. How do we do that? This is my, this really is one of my favorite topics. So this is it because oftentimes there's either agencies or family members or friends or neighbors or church members, all of they, they want to help. They kind of see it from a distance and they can tell. Yeah. And so it's, um, wow, this topic is big because uh, we, we can not force or put our expectations or, or any of that onto a person. You just can't do it. So how do we do it? We do it with love and a whole lot of patience and a whole lot of compassion and a whole lot of letting go of control. Because in so many instances with, when someone is hoarding something or it's a matter of safety and control, and so that needs to be handled lightly, delicately, because control is the thing. And if now you're in there, it's just um, if you start to say, this is the way it should be done. I can help with this. You should do this. Why don't you do this? Anything and even remotely like that will push them back even further. So um, it's a matter of asking a lot of questions and it, they have to have their own buy in. So it's really like, hey. Uh, how are you doing? Do you, do you, and if they don't, you have to honor it. You have to mm -hmm. honor the answer to the question, even if they don't know it or not, because in time, I'll tell you a story. This is coming in. It's fun. So I had a kid, he called, he was probably like 21. And I think he had seen one of my speaking events. And so he said, Hey, my parents are hoarding and I want to help them. And I don't know what to do. It's all we ever talk about. It's the topic of the discussion, the, the discussion. Um, and we're not getting along. How can I do this? Basically, he was like, how can I force them to do it? And we had a really super cool discussion. And I said, "Are would you be okay with your parents hoarding? And he was like, what? No. And I was like, okay, let's like work on that. Are they safe? Yes. Um, is there anything like, like that was the biggest thing. Are they safe? Yes, they're safe. And so he, we, we played with it a little bit and I, I helped him to see where it was his issue all along. And so then he was like, oh my gosh. I said, can you love them? Can you go hang out with them? Can you, can you do all the things a kid would do and not even bring it up and go into the city that, because he lived out of state. And so he went in and he saw him and he did that. And then he, he ended up calling me. He was like, oh my gosh, it was the best time I ever had with my parents. We didn't talk about it. We connected. We had a great time. And then eventually they came to the decision on their own. So yeah, it's um, it's a fun one to understand that a lot of the issues that we have with it are our own. And it comes from a place of fear. He was afraid. He was afraid mm -hmm. that something was going to happen and he was going to get inherited this big house. And I'm like, well, now you're thinking way ahead into the future. How about your parents right now in the present moment? The biggest question you can ever ask anybody is, are they safe? And that might, you know, that might, um, some people might have a different answer to that, but if they're safe, then you kind of got to say, Hey, you have to leave them, leave them until they have this much of an opening and then you can start to help. But so if there is someone. this much of an opening, Oh, I want to stop before we mm -hmm. talk about the opening. We're going to come back and talk about the opening yeah. for a minute. I want to say hi to our, okay. our fans and mm -hmm. followers and everybody that's joined us today. I appreciate you guys being here so much. Uh, hi from Brenda. She says, hello. Yeah. Katrina Anderson it. says, good afternoon. Good afternoon as well. Uh, Jilly Bean says, mm -hmm. hello. Happy to catch another episode. Jilly Bean, we are so glad that you're back here. Hello and, and welcome. <laughs> Uh, Kathy says, cool business and professional development. Uh, Katrina Anderson says, my company specializes in hoarding and crime Yay. scene cleaning. Yay, we're all here for the same Yay. reasons. Um, <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for joining us and all of you that are also on the replay. Um, so if there is this much of an opening where mm -hmm. maybe someone admits like, hey, we are mm -hmm. kind of approaching in years. We don't want to leave our kids and grandkids with all of our stuff. What yeah. is the step for them to take action and either to call you or to 
start the process of downsizing and removing some of the stuff that they enjoyed in their lives, but maybe they're the future generations will not. Yeah, that's good. It's just that it's a first step. So it's starting to look and it's, it's being open and honest about the situation. Right. So it's like, um, it's being okay with the answer. So if, if you're that person, it's like, are you okay? If you say, Hey, does any of my kids want anything? And the answer is no, then it's like, oof, okay, I have to be okay with that. So it's just, it's, it's really being vulnerable, open and honest and starting discussion uh, from there. I mean, it can start anywhere and it's probably very different for so many different people in terms of what you want to start focusing on. But the key is if you're ready and you think that you're, um, you're ready to start having the discussion, then yeah, make a list. Just like, hey, who, who wants this? Start having the discussion. I think that's even with financial planning. A lot of people don't like to talk about death or really scary things, but you have to talk about it. It's totally okay to talk about it and then be okay with the answer too because times have changed, generations change. So it's not about so the stuff. <laughs> one of the things that has changed um, mm -hmm. from the beginning of time is the landfills now are really expensive. When you take stuff on mm -hmm. your own to a landfill, it's really expensive. And so the cost mm -hmm. of junk removal and uh, that kind of stuff has gone up for, for some very good reasons. And many people I yeah. know that we've talked to are like, oh, it's so expensive. I don't have the money and the resources. Can you talk to us a little mm. bit about what uh, or where the money might come from if we are in the process mm. of I, I need a junk removal company and maybe I don't have the resources to hire a, a company and pay full price? So good. Yeah, there's so many options. Because again, never once somebody's ready, we never want to turn them away because they don't have the money. So in your local area, there are usually, well, this is usually for seniors. Some places have a lot, um, a few options for people that are younger uh, children. Read out to a local agency, um, do a little bit of research in a nonprofit. Sometimes they have grants when it comes to housing, like housing, housing authorities, um, there's so many different variables that it's tough. Uh, I, you know, I can't say them all, but I would say reach out to, to, uh, nonprofits because sometimes they have money. Um, there are ways to do it yourself. Um, dumpsters are good. There are so many online donatable places now that can pick up and you can do it with a calendar. So it's like you get on their, um, website and you pick the date and you set it out by the curb and a donatable uh, place will pick it up. So that's one thing. Um, there's just so many it, I would just stress if you have friends, family, church members, if you want to ask for their help, you should be in a place where you're very, um, knowledgeable about your own feelings and you don't let them come in and do something that you're going to regret. Because some, many, many, many times people will let that in. Um, it'll kind of be like buyer's remorse. You know, they'll come in, everybody will do what they want. And the next day the person is set back and they don't trust anyone because no one was really listening to them. So usually when you want to start, um, trust should be built. Um, it, and that's being able to tell a friend or a family, hey, you know, I don't care if I have 10 pins, I want to keep all 10 pins. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like things like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's many different ways. It to me, it feels like also when you set the intention. So a lot of this is like when you're ready, uh funny thing happens, it'll be you the help will, will show up. Kind of like when you are when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Same thing. Mm -hmm. When you're ready and you put some intention and you start making some calls. You might call an agency like Clutter Trucker and say, hey, I don't have the money. Well, hey, guess what? I know three agencies in this area that they have funds. Let's get you hooked up that way. But it's it's taking action. So it's not like, oh, I'm ready, I'm ready. So just start making calls and funny enough, things will fall into place and it'll all it'll all work out. Well, and I love that you brought that up because that's a lot like doing a Google search. When you go to Google and you type in, yeah. hey, I'm looking for red boots, what happens is yeah. 
Google will pop up and say, did you mean these red boots? Did you mean these red boots? Well, how about yeah. these? How about Same these? Thing. These ones have spurs. How about this? And there are mm -hmm. things that start popping up. And then I don't know if you say the word red boots. I don't know why, but it's like the next time you go on a website, it doesn't matter yeah. what website, red boots are going to pop up. Red and they're boots. like, hey, these yeah. red boots. And you're like, well, where did that come yeah. from? But it's like we live in yeah. an era now where like once you connect with the idea of maybe yes. it's time to start downsizing, then there will be different opportunities. How about this? There will yeah. be like, uh, I know that in my neighborhood, they have a drive where they say we're we're coming by. Like you said, we're picking up stuff, put it in a, a sack or a garbage bag or this bag that we provide you and put it up by your mailbox yeah. on a certain day. Call us if you want us to pick up furniture or what have you. We've got a list yeah. and I will leave them in the links below. They're not there now, but I will leave them after the show is over. We've got about 10 mm -hmm. places around the United States that have trucks that will come by and pick up your donations. Totally. I, also want to, I know that I place. Also, I also want to throw out that as I've been moving, I had a lot mm -hmm. of things that I thought were really valuable. And I don't want to be ugly or anything, mm -hmm. but I guess no one else thought they were valuable because nobody wanted them. <laughs> so I was like, but this is valuable. Yeah. This is worth something. And I was like, yeah. I give it away for free, right? So mm -hmm. it, it was the free that finally somebody came and got it. But I mean, literally, I put it at the end of my driveway, took a picture of it at the end of my driveway with my mailbox number and the house in the background so that they could see it's this house. And then I would say yeah. on nextdoor.com, this is free. If you wanted it, it's at the end of my drive, first come, first serve, no returns. Like, do not bring this yeah. back. If you want it, yeah. it's free. It's so yours. Good. Right? That's a good idea. Yeah. That's perfect. And a lot of Facebook marketplace and all of that is really good at if you're if you're up for it and you can resell it um, there 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 and you have the time. There's a lot of there's a lot of options. So there's so, so many. It just depends, depends on where you're at and who you are. One of the things that I noticed about using Facebook marketplace, because I, I haven't used mm -hmm. it a lot. But I was mm -hmm. like, hey, I got nothing to lose, right? I've, I'm giving stuff away now. What if I sold it? And so yeah. I went to put something on Facebook Marketplace. And what's interesting mm -hmm. is when I went to hit the submit button, it said, do you want to list it in all these other places? And it popped up like 10 buy oh, or wow. sell marketplaces that were in Facebook that were in my geographical location. And I was like, whoa, I didn't wow. know about that. So I said, yes. So with one click, it listed them on like 10 different sites. And I was like, how cool yeah. is that? Then I had this weird, creepy yeah. feeling in my head. Like, how will I know if someone responds? Well, someone responded on instant messenger, but like the little Facebook marketplace thing popped up. So it was a different icon. And when I clicked on that, yeah. someone's like, hey, is this still available or whatever? So they, yeah. the, the algorithms know, like we, like, like Jennifer said, things will start popping up. Um, yeah. It, things will start making themselves available. Like, Hey, this person's yeah. downsizing or. The key to that. And like, I, I like to tell people is the key to that is really being super attentive to how this is making me feel. So if I am going to, if it's going to stress me out, if it's going to feel like another job, if it's going to prevent this process from moving on, because I have an idea that I need this much money or that I need to feel good. Just be start to watch your thoughts and become aware because sometimes it can really stall and you'll go in that rabbit hole and it, it just will slow everything down. And it also can, it, it can become stressful if that's what your whole intention is trying to find the perfect home for this thing. It's like, okay, sometimes mm -hmm. giving that space, giving that whole thing space and will help flow will help the whole process flow. But if we get bogged down in like, you know, trying to find, trying to sell everything can be hard sometimes. So a question, mm -hmm. um, how does somebody who hires you for junk removal, how do mm -hmm. they know when they've reached success? Mm -hmm. mm, that's a really good question. Um, so, so oftentimes we're doing stuff for agencies and there's actually an inspection and we have to do that. And so it's like, they're either facing an inspection or eviction or something like that. And that's pretty self-explanatory. You, we can follow that uniform inspection guide, like everything needs to be this big. Um, but otherwise I think that it's just, they know when it's complete. They know when a lot of times we work with people 
um, to get it to the place where they can have an agency come in. So they need just a really big deep clean, something maybe had been neglected or it's just they hadn't taken the time. Once we come in, now they have a home health care or they have uh, another just regular cleaning company come in. So that's a that's that feels like that's complete. It's different for everyone. Um, yeah, it's different for everyone given the situation. And that's like situation is all over the place. So assume in this scenario that somebody has a whole mm -hmm. house full of stuff and they have a storage uh -huh. unit or two and they have an attic and a garage and they've got a scary oh, room yeah. and whatever. And maybe there's like a part of the house that kind of looks clean, but you go in and you're like, well, there's really stuff hiding everywhere. Where would you yeah. start? If you were going to start the process of decluttering. Yeah, I usually stay start with the lowest hanging fruit, the place you know, like you know it's okay to start there. Get the momentum going. So it depends. If let's say all, all of your grandmother's stuff is in the storage unit and that's so hard because you emotionally don't even want to open it up, I would not start there. If mm. you just have a kitchen that has maybe wrappers or like expired food or just stuff that you're like, yeah, I don't know. I just let that get out of hand. I start there and that gets the momentum and that builds the trust with whoever you're working with. So those first few sessions are key. So if you have all of this and you really are starting to get the nudge, like, okay, maybe it's time to look at it. You're getting the nudge. You're not being nudged because that's two different things. If someone mm. else is saying it has to be done, that's a totally that that then we'll start with whatever's most safe, like whatever is the, you know, what is creating the most unsafe place. That's where we would start. But if it's you yourself and you're starting to get the feeling like, hey, I want to look at this. I just say start with what's going to make you feel the best and what's the easiest, because it, it's really all about that. It's just about um, really connecting yourself and. Yeah having so much self-compassion because that shame and that judgment, it turns inward and that stalls everything. And it's not always fun to feel or understand that it's, it's really an inner game. So that's what I've learned along the way. And if, if we, as people can just come alongside them, come alongside them and let them feel that somebody else cares that I'm not judging you. then yeah, then they can start to feel that with themselves. Uh, we've got a uh, viewer question, and Tenny cool. Rebellia says, does a service like this cost per hour or per job, or do you have to get an estimate? That is an excellent I question. Love that. Thank you for that. That is an excellent question. I love that question. It's a combination of all of it. Um, we do hourly. You can do hourly. You can do volume of stuff that is removed. Um, the way we like to do it, this is the way, I mean, we we don't, a lot of companies out there will bid the whole project. That's not really how we do things. Um, estimates are always preferred. Um, for us, we provide that free. And so we just have someone come and meet and then we get to see the space. We get to see you. It's a conversation. And then we can talk about how, how, how do we want to do it? We have somebody want to come in and sort with you and then stage it and then have the truck come by. Or do we want to have the truck come by first and get the big things? And then we have, it's just like, yeah, so many different options, combination of both hourly could be project, but we don't really do that. Um, yeah. So do you work it out on somebody's budget? Like, let's say I only have $500 and I say, Hey, what can I get for $500 in, in terms of help and removal? Yes. I'm going to move because my plug broke. Um, <clears> but I'm here. Okay. Um, yes, $500. We will work within the budget. So that is something that we do. Oh, please. Now I'm good. Okay. All right. I'm back. Welcome um, back. Thanks. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I like to not have money be the issue. So if they're ready and they have a budget, then we really want to see, you know, how much can you do? Again, do you have family members that could help? Um, I don't ever want to get money as the, the determining factor, even though it is a factor. When they're ready, it's time to, time to get them some help. All right. So let's suppose that I'm the person that has collected a whole entire lifetime full of things and I've inherited, 
you know, five generations of things and I'm creative. And so I think I'm going to use every little piece of whatever that I saved for a different project and I'm going to paint everything and repurpose it and all the things. And yet I haven't found the time. And so it's kind of accumulated. What are some questions that I should either ask myself or I should ask you when I'm starting the decluttering process to determine if mm -hmm. I'm actually ready and I'm going to be able to go through the process? Because I don't want to waste anybody's time. Ah, I mean, the number one question I usually ask is what is prompting this? Why, are, why do you want to do this now? Like, let's open that up. Is it time? Um, it might be difficult, but having... Sorry, having that um, would be the thing. So what is prompting it at this time is a good one. And um, yeah, from there, so many other different questions that you could ask. Um, yeah, it depends on if, they're, if we're working with an agency or we're working with the person. Yeah. So I know from my own personal journey, we decided to move. And the reason we decided to move right now is because we're young and we have the ability and the energy. And mm -hmm. we are at that fun age and there's a really fun age. And I, wanna, I want to um, remind people of the fun age that I'm in right now <clears throat> yeah. where many people of my age are just becoming grandparents. Their kids have moved away from home, so they're empty nested and they still have parents that are living that are in that elder parent age that then require yeah. more attention, more care, more love. Maybe they're going to move in with you. And all of a sudden there's this weird window of, oh my goodness, if I can get my own affairs in order, I'm going to be in a better position than to help elder parents be a grandparent and all the things. But I find that yeah. once that window is passed, and I've seen it with a couple of clients and friends and relatives where they waited mm -hmm. maybe 15 years too long and they're still in a five bedroom home and it's like they can't get up the stairs and it's still collecting stuff or the kids left stuff when they moved out. And now yeah. they're ready to downsize. They don't have the energy. They don't have the strength, the resources, and half their house hasn't been used for years, which means it hasn't been maintained. And so right now we are yeah. in that age where I'm like, let's do it right now because right now we can. And then I, I'm downsizing from a huge yeah. house to a house that's oh, half wow. the size. But okay. right now I'm thinking to myself, I don't, I wouldn't okay. want to downsize from this house 10 years from now. This is a lot yeah. of work right now. Yeah, it is. I think it's knowing that it's going through the experience. And I think most people have to do it at some point. And it does mm -hmm. just take time. And then it's also mm -hmm. the awareness of like, what, what, how am I moving forward? Am I still accumulating things? Is there still that? Cause that's always a question too. Are you still accumulating things? Because if you are, then let's look at that too. So there's a lot of moving parts to it, but having the awareness that this is, it's something everyone has to do. So yeah, it feels like you, you, you know, when you know, and so, you know, you know, it's time for you to start looking at that and uh, making those decisions now. Mm. Yeah. Um, are there some challenges that you run into that you would like to alert our listeners and our viewers to that could make your job easier and maybe make it easier for them in terms of processing some of the stuff that they have grown so accustomed to? Yeah. I think it, it goes back, the challenges goes back to when somebody else is involved. So mm -hmm. if, 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 if someone else is involved in that and that's really creating a lot of um, conflict, then that's something that you'll, you're gonna wanna look at. Um, I would say some other challenges. I mean, the way we work, it's like, it's, it's having unrealistic expectation maybe too. So sometimes like holding down that expectation and recognizing that it's going to take a long period of time. Sometimes I think another challenge is waiting till the last moment. So mm. what, to your point, that's a, that's challenging for us. Um, and I'm sure anybody else, like that, if you're cleaning or you have a move out clean and they're like, yeah, we, we need to sell it. It's getting listed tomorrow. And we haven't even really thought of it. Um, especially if there's other people involved. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Like they'll call us and say, Hey, I need to be out by the end of the week and it's packed and I have a mover coming. So not, um, 
not being prepared, I think starting way in advance, much more longer than you think, because it's going to mm -hmm. take longer than you think. So giving yourself that time is just going to be super helpful and kind so that you're not putting you and other companies or realtors or anybody else under stress. Um, I would say start early. That's a big one. What, what advice would you give to people who have, and I'm going to just throw a scenario at you. Let's say that they had a house full of valuable things that either they collected or they were using, or maybe they inherited mm -hmm. or whatever. They got a house full of stuff. And then maybe mm -hmm. something unfortunate happened. There's a leak in the roof. And then some of the stuff got damaged mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now it's not valuable anymore. And now we have to process that stuff and there still is a leaky roof. So now we have a house yeah. that's be becoming junk and it was once valuable. There's no value in it anymore. You can't sell it. Yeah. It literally needs to be removed. What advice would you give us? Yeah, I would say to feel what comes up when that happens because it's more about the feeling than the stuff. So, I mean, this is when it gets into the work, like the the emotional work and the the psychological aspect of it. But yeah, I mean, if you get to the point where it is not what you think it is and it makes you sad, there's always something deeper underneath it. It's not really about that, but what does that symbol? And what 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 does it symbolize? What emotion, what feeling is it bringing up? Because that's where the gold is. Because if you can connect to that and kind of heal that, then it's not about the stuff. Um, like, what does it say if you have this? Does it say something about yourself? This is all much deeper work. Um, but what people should know is that's that's really what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people think it is about the the, the item that it isn't. So, yeah, it can be tough. Um, but I would say cry through it. That's really what I would tell people. That is what I tell people when you when you see it, just holding that space and feeling through it. Um, that's really what's going on. Is there something else that's being released when you really let go of the stuff? Some other well, emotion, some other memory. It's all, it's all part of it. Yeah. I, I appreciate your honesty about this because it is a really tough situation and one that does not come stress-free. I'm going to mm -hmm. say that for all the 32 years that I've been in the cleaning business and all of the homes that we've helped people declutter and process and clean up their homes, there's there's a stress that comes with that and i i yeah. think to the uh, the flight on the hudson river when the pilot of 33 years i forget how many years he'd been flying planes mm -hmm. realizes in this one moment we're gonna do a crash landing and his only words in a very calm sense was brace for mm -hmm. impact yeah and i keep thinking that wow. i keep going back to that moment because he knew this is not the norm this is something we've trained for, but hope yeah. we would never face. Here we mm. are in this moment where a decision has to be made immediately. Yeah. Race for impact. And yeah. in a really graceful way, he landed that plane on the Hudson River. Mm. It's the first time in history mm. that no one got hurt, right? He did an amazing yeah. job. And as I look at that scenario, there are so many times we're headed straight for a crash landing. And if we can brace for impact in a really positive sort of way, it's it's not going to be stress free. Okay, it's not going to be stress free. Right, it's I'm, not. I'm in the pro mm -hmm. I'm in the process of moving right now, and no one is making us move. No one is making us yeah. move. Yeah, we're making ourselves move. And uh. I I keep thinking, as stressful as this is, stop, Angela. Don't get all uh, excited. Mm -hmm. No one is making you do this. Okay, you're making yeah. yourself do this, and it is stressful, mm -hmm. but Imagine doing it now instead of later. It's going to be better yeah. now. There's never going to be a better time than right now to do this. And if you put it off, it only gets harder. And then the emotions yeah. and the stress that you're yeah. dealing with right now, you're going to now maybe in 10 years, you got medical issues. Maybe you have family issues. Yeah. Maybe there are other things that will mm -hmm. complicate that. It's never going to be easier than right now. No. So and that's brace the key. For, it's like when you, yeah, it's a, a brace for impact. And it's also like when you're, when you're in the midst of it, stay in the present moment. So yeah. stay in this moment with this thing. So if I'm looking at this thing and it's bringing up a memory of the past, okay, that's fine. Feel the memory of the past, but we're doing it right now. And so all of that, it's like accepting the present moment 
And whether it's stressful, whether it's joyful, whatever it is, that's where it's at. And so, mm-hmm. and then it'll smooth out. The landing will, you'll be able to land. But if you're not accepting of the present moment and you're, I mean, it just makes it a little bit harder, that stress and all of it. If you're, if you can watch where your mind goes, because these minds like to make things up and they'll come up with worst case scenario and all of the fear and all of that. And, oh my gosh, but it takes a lot of practice and the breath, um, when I was working with clients, breathing was key to um, moving. When you're when you're in a situation and you're sorting in that, it's like, can we all can we all breathe? So I had a guy once, and he was angry, and he should have been angry because the the HOA was making him get mm-hmm. rid of his stuff. And this is true. This can happen. You know, code enforcement, all of that. And he he was just like furious. And I wouldn't have let a lot of my employees do it, but I was like, it's okay to be angry. I like let it rip and he, he just was throwing things and I could just see like all of that emotion was so warranted and it was suppressed anger for so long that mm-hmm. once we just let it go, he knew he had to do it, but it was honoring and acknowledging, Hey, he's got this anger. I would be angry too. Can you just be angry? And then let's move on with the process. And it made the whole day smoother. So it's never about this stuff. It's all the other stuff that's going on. Well, I love the fact that you let him vent because sometimes yeah. that venting is a really great way to process those emotions. And yeah. I would like to encourage people instead of just, um, and God bless Jennifer for letting him just throw things and, and have an adult you know, moment. Of, oh. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things I like to do is in the process of decluttering and removing stuff, one of the things we like to really mm-hmm. encourage is walking every day. Get out for a really brisk mm-hmm. walk because mm-hmm. as you get mm-hmm. out there and you start, and, and I mean like walk fast, walk fast like you're in a hurry to go somewhere. When you start yeah. walking really fast, all of a sudden you start the endorphins and you start cycling yeah. through your blood and your oxygen and everything starts moving again in your body and you start, you, you get up yeah. and you start going, which is the opposite from being depressed. And I'm I'm not, I'm not, able to move. I'm just paralyzed. You, you kind of like kickstart your own metabolism and you're, you know, you get going again, but what happens is you're working yeah. through a lot of that pent up frustration where now when you get back home, you're kind of like, whoa, I'm, 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 I'm all ready to go again. And that kind of puts you in a mood for what if, what if yeah. I was to get rid of 10 things today? Yeah. And I would just say honoring and acknowledging whatever comes up, allow it to be there without judgment because none of it makes logical sense. So if you're doing something and an emotion arises, whether it's grief, whether it's anger, whether it's joy, whatever it is, let it be there and breathe because the breathing will, will move it through. I was also working with another man and, and he had PTSD and we were moving along just fine. And then all of a sudden I saw like, okay, I don't know what it is, but something hit. And, and he was like, oof, he even knew it. He was like, I have to go to the bathroom and breathe. And he did it on his own and it was so sweet. And he came out and he just, he knew he had done enough work, mental health to know that it wasn't something else was happening. And it wasn't really, he wanted the work to be done. Um, but as soon as he connected to, to his breath, it was a rush of emotion and it doesn't have to make sense. This, we're weird human beings. So what we think we're crying about, we're probably not even really crying about. If we, if we don't go our whole lives and breathe and emote and, let like is that ever allowed you know like you said like how often was this man allowed to actually express his anger in a, in um in a safe way so yeah i would just say when doing any process connect with your breath breathe and let whatever's coming up come up so that usually it's not always easy so there's a moment and it's a tough moment and that's a moment when a dump truck arrives at my house and I see all of my stuff being loaded up and mm-hmm. this might be stuff that I've inherited or stuff that was in a storage unit or my parents or their grandparents or whatever, all the things. And I see it being loaded up and hauled away. How mm-hmm. do you recommend somebody deal with that moment where they watch their whole life's collection of stuff being moved, moved along down the road? Yeah. Breathe, breathe like really deeply connect to what is it bringing up in you? Because whatever it's bringing up in you really wants to be felt. And that's really what it is. And that's really what's happening when emotions come up. And the 
biggest, easiest way to get through it is with the breath um, and try not to start to analyze it or interpret it here and go into the mind, but stay here and have a whole lot of like slowness, patience, love, compassion. Um, yeah, I think we all need to be a little bit more gentler with ourselves. Tough things, big things. These are big things. And we as a society, I always say, this is my thing. I, this is, I say, you know, people that are hoarding are super sensitive. I've learned that super sensitive. So they're tapped in. We have a culture have ingrained in consumerism and buy this and buy this and buy this. So yeah, they're doing, they're doing what they're feeling. I mean, people hoard money and they're called billionaires. Like, think of that. Like we put all this shame and stigma and like, not we, but people put shame and stigma on this thing, but there's something deeper going on with, with that um, being super sensitive and tapped in. So I think we need to be really super compassionate with ourselves. And when that self-judgment comes in, if you, if, you, if you are able to tap into it, just send it love because there's something so much bigger going on right now. <laughs> In, in in many ways. Well, and I want to thank you for sharing your ideas with us. And also I want to th thank everybody for the comments that are coming in. Um, Alex makes mm -hmm. a really good point. Alex says, do these things before you get injured and are unable to lift. And yeah. I, can you speak to us for uh, just a second? I know you do a lot of work with seniors and there's a, yeah. a moment in time where, like Alex says, it's it's going to be more advantageous if you're actually mobile and able to make some of those decisions yourself. Yeah, I mean, of course, of course. It's usually something will happen and it will make it a whole lot harder if you procrastinate, procrastinate, and procrastinate. And so one is that if you can't lift or you can't move or if you go into the hospital and you have to have major surgery, um, all of these things may make it out of your control. So if control is a thing, like you said, do it, do it when your mind is there and your body is there. Um, yeah. And it's also, if, <laughs> it's okay. There are companies that will come in if you can't lift or, or it's gone too long. So I say like that, do it when you're able, when you get the claim, because you'll get so if uh, somebody was getting ready now to hire a, and I'm going to say a junk removal company, let's suppose that they just have a whole house full or a whole lifetime full of stuff and they're ready to yeah. let go. What do they ask for when they call your company? So there's two distinctions here. So I know that we say I'm a junk, we're a junk removal company, but we're really not. So we're a hoarding specialist because sometimes uh, if you Google junk removal, they're not equipped and they're, they're really motivated to go in and get it and, and leave. If that is mm -hmm. the case, great. Have a, have a knowing, have a list, have everything. This is what I know goes and this is what I know stays. Then ask all of those questions. Um, you can just ask what the pricing is, what the process is. Do The biggest thing is, do you feel comfortable? Um, yeah, really check in. And then if you need a little bit more hands-on, that's when a regular junk removal company probably won't be your best. If you want someone to help you kind of determine, be a little bit slower. Junk removal companies aren't usually priced for them to slow down in your house. They're usually priced for curbside pickups, garage pickups, or just point and say they go, which is great. But if you need a little bit more work, do a little bit more research to find a company that really does specialize in being in the home and, and working one-on-one. -on -one. And what is the term for that? If I was going to call that kind of company that would give me a little bit more time and attention and take my feelings into consideration and maybe help me process through some of the individual stuff. Uh, yeah, you can do the hoarding. Um, and I know there's someone on the, on this call too, that does hoarding in crime scene or biohazard that sometimes is a little bit different. So I think you can say hoarding specialist um, if it is to that extent. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had, but there's probably some professional organizers that are super good uh, and they can take that project as a whole. There are some uh, estate sale people that can do that pretty good. Um, yeah, so sometimes, and there's some senior move managers, some downsizing 
uh, companies that do that. That can be really good, but again, you have to you have to make it clear that I might need a little bit more hands on. No shame, but hey, mine mine might be a little bit more than the than the other person. But I think estimates are good if they give on site free estimates. You'll be able to connect with the person and trust and feel if they're the right fit. And don't be afraid to say no if it doesn't feel good. Say no. I love that because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the home is a place of refuge. That is your safe yeah. place. And I, I yeah. want you to feel that you have are in a safe place. And I want you to feel that you've chosen a safe person to work with should you decide to declutter or downsize or have some yeah. of your stuff removed. So I love the yeah. fact that Jennifer has joined us today. I cannot believe our time is up. I want to say thank you guys so much for joining us. Jennifer, please tell our listeners where they can go to find you. Yeah, right now you can go to cluttertrucker.com. So uh, we're located in Colorado and we're expanding. There it is, cluttertrucker.com would be how you can connect. So I really appreciate it. So fun to talk. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today because this is a conversation that many of us are having because of the time in life mm -hmm. that we are approaching. Many of us are wanting to have these conversations with our family members and our parents. And so I yeah. love the fact that Jennifer was willing to join us today. So if you have questions mm -hmm. that we did not answer today, please leave those in the links below because we're going to be circling back through here on a regular basis to answer those questions. And as always, I really appreciate you guys joining us today. We know you have lots of choices for watching YouTube and hanging out on podcasts. And we love the fact that you hung out with us. So thank you so much. Thank we'll you. see you guys same time, same place next week. Take care.